What's up my friends? Thanks for joining me on Survey Homestead again. I am Dustin. I'm a little discouraged about the radiator on the little tractor, but I'll get it fixed or I'll, I'll price a new one. So I'm back over here to the big one, the old International, to drain the filters and check on them. There is a shut off down here and I'll catch the diesel that comes out but first I'm going to shut it off right here with the shut off that I installed. Um, the one that was on the bottom of the tank was metal and didn't work anymore. So I'll shut off the fuel, catch what comes out of these and then with the 13 millimeter I will remove this. It's a long screw that goes to the bottom and holds it on. All right, I already see a problem. This is all that came out. And it doesn't look very healthy. It just looks watery and weird. Um, I don't know why that's all that's coming out. This, this screw right here has a flat side to it. See that? See that flat part right there with no threads? Once you get there, the hole is open that much and liquid should be coming out. Let's go ahead and take the housing off and see how it looks. Oops. Oh, now more is coming out. Huh. Maybe I needed some air coming in to let fuel come out. See if you turn the shut off valve just right, it'll trickle out in a way that you can catch it. So I'm going to shut this off because I just need a small amount to come out so that I can handle the cup better. See earlier I showed you the grass closer to the house. It's St. Augustine. Similar to this, but softer, darker, wider blades of grass. Uh, this is, I think, what's called Bahia. Bah Bahia, something like that. And it grows in sprigs like this. St. Augustine grows in almost like vines. It can touch down and make a new plant. Um, this would make what we call common hay, from what I understand. Nothing special affordable to get started if you want hay compared to uh, Bermuda type grass or alfalfa. All right, this is definitely not what the diesel looked like when I put it in there. That's uh, it's not too good looking. And here is the screw loosened. See that it goes down in there and holds the canister on. See gunk in there. That filter hasn't even been in there that long. Shoosh. Sometimes with old equipment, it's hard to find the parts. There's a pre filter and a main filter, I guess, or a pre filter and a more fine filter. I went to my local Case International Harvester store and they had some trouble. Uh, they didn't have anything that looked exactly like mine. The old ones in here had cork seals at the top instead of this rubber. And uh, they saw in their booklet that there were two kinds of filters, but they didn't even know how to order one of them. They happened to have this one in stock, but this wasn't even what their booklet said to get. They just found one and saw that it was the same size and shape as mine, so it was kind of tough. Uh, but the D is supposed to signify the engine that was made in Germany as opposed to the one made in the U.S. So maybe that's why it's more difficult to find the parts. And this tractor was made from like 
I don't know, 1963 to 1969, something like that. Yeah. That is nasty. Watch. Let's see if we can see it as it poured out. Ooh. Man, I don't know what that is. Where did that come from? Must be at the bottom of the tank. The other canister had sludge in it as well. How that sludge got past the filter, I don't know. Check this out. It should be dripping faster than that. Definitely have a problem in the tank. So getting this panel off was not that easy. There were about three different kinds of bolts holding it on. This thing was definitely used as a real tractor and not as uh, something anyone ever intended to restore as a classic. So, finally got it. Mud dauber nest and wasp nest. To get this panel off, I would have to get the muffler off. And it's not that hard, but I'm going to try to finagle this section off without taking this one off. This whole piece only had like two bolts holding it on. Okay, I got it loose. I noticed as soon as I took the uh, fuel cap off, liquid came out. I don't know if you guys are familiar with judging different kinds of liquids, but by the way that behaves, that's water. Right in the edge of this. And I've had this thing covered for the last two weeks. So my cap must be faulty. It's letting some water get in here. All right, let's take this off. Wow, that's a sizable gas tank. Man. Okay. Did that without getting hurt. Yeah, it's pretty tall. And that's all I have to get up by. See? I have to take this front panel off anyway. The tank is so long, it goes under here. All the way to there. Man. So much of the tank is just this section here. Only this bottom part is, is uh, what extends down here. Huh. And you know something is old when it has flathead screws. My muffler is simply held on with a screw clamp. Uh, so the top pipe is just slotted. See the flange? And a screw clamp or something similar holds it on to this neck. And I had trouble with the four studs here. I think they all broke. Except maybe one or two when I took this off. So it's held on temporarily, as you can see. So this explains why I've been running only for about 15 minutes at a time. Look at that, it's barely trickling in. Not sure why. So it was running just on what was in the filters and in the system. My return line is this braided metal line. So the excess diesel comes back and supposed to go up this check valve, but it was leaking. And I was trying to eliminate all restrictions, so I simply put this T in here so the return line comes in and just joins the main line and goes to the filters. So I brought my hand pump. I'm going to pump this out and get the tank out. I got the bolts off. They were pretty difficult. It's almost like they were cross-threaded, one in each corner. All right, let me pump this out now.
half a gallon in about 20 seconds. Oh, that mockingbird, did you see that? The mockingbird almost landed right there. So I had to come back in the house. It's getting dark and it started to drizzle. So hey, I'm not trying to trick y'all. I'm not trying to make a part two unnecessarily to get y'all to come back to my channel or anything. But I just had to break it. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I'll have some more time to work on the big tractor and get it running, get that big heavy tank off. But I need to get a few more gallons of fuel out. I got all the bolts off and I think I can lift it with the boys help. Maybe my wife's help will see. Swish that sucker around. Dump it out through the lid a few times. And that should help a lot. Alright, hey, thanks for watching Survey Homestead. You guys are awesome. Take care. We'll see you on the next one. So my good old International 706D.